The central nervous system includes the brain and spinal cord and is responsible for integrating, processing, and coordinating sensory data and motor commands. The peripheral nervous system is all the neural tissue outside of the central nervous system, such as the spinal nerves and any other nerves. And the peripheral nervous system relays information from the outside or from the sensory centers to the central nervous system and then relays information from the central nervous system out to the peripheral nervous system such as motor movements or other responses. Here we have a model of the brain and we can see some bumps. Those bumps we call gyri or gyri, gyrus singular, and the grooves we call sulci plural, sulcus singular, and then fissures are deep grooves and we'll talk about all those in a little bit. Here is a sagittal section of the brain and the cerebrum is this outside layer here. It's the telencephalon and a cerebral hemisphere is one half. So this right here is one cerebral hemisphere. And we have the corpus callosum. That's this structure right here, sending nerve impulses from each side of the brain. And then we have the cerebral cortex, which is going to be this gray section. If we look in here, we see some white matter. So the cerebral cortex is the gray. And on this model, it's depicted as pink, but in general, it's called gray matter. Here we have a top view of the cerebrum. Down the middle, we have the longitudinal fissure. Separating temporal and parietal lobes, we have the lateral sulcus. This is not a sulcus, but a feature of the model. Here in the back, separating occipital lobes, or occipital lobe and parietal lobes, we have the parietal occipital sulcus. Then coming across the top, we have the central sulcus. In front of the central sulcus, we have the precentral gyrus, this bump, and in back, we have the postcentral gyrus. In the cerebrum, we have four major lobes. We have the parietal lobes, the frontal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobes. Then if we were to bring back this structure, the midbrain, this was taken from here. Removed like that. This is the insula. Here we have a cerebellum. One half is a cerebellar hemisphere. The cerebellar cortex is like this outside part, this outside part of the cerebellum. Then we have folds in the cortex, and those are the folia. If we put both halves back together, we have a little line in the middle. This is the vermis. And if we look on the inside, this white structure that's branching is the arbor vitae. On this model, we can look at half of it on the inside, so a sagittal section. In the diencephalon, we have the thalamus and the hypothalamus. In the middle here, we have the interthalamic adhesion. And then in the back, we have the pineal gland. In the front here, we have the anterior commissure. We have the mammillary bodies right here. You can also see those on the front. We have the optic chiasm here for which the optic nerve comes this way. Around here we have the optic tract. And then out in the front we have the pituitary gland attached by the infundibulum. And on the brain stem we have the mesencephalon or the midbrain right here. Here we have the tectum, this region, and on that we have superior colliculus an inferior colliculus. If we look at it together, we have superior colliculi and inferior colliculi. And then here we have the aqueduct of midbrain and the tegmentum, this region here. And if we come around here, we have the cerebral peduncles. 
And then looking here again, we have the pawns, the medulla oblongata. On the pawns, we have transverse fibers. And on the medulla oblongata, we have the olive. This structure down here and the central canal. This is a model of the ventricles of the brain. This model shows spaces in the brain, so it is not necessarily a structure. Here we have two lateral ventricles, these large ones. We have interventricular foramina. Remember that this is a model of spaces, so this is showing passageways. Then we have the third ventricle, which is this one right here. We can orient ourselves because this is where the interthalamic adhesion goes. This pink stuff is choroid plexus. Then we have the aqueduct of midbrain going right here from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle, which is right here. This guy is the fourth ventricle. And that continues on to the central canal. And dividing these two ventricles up here, the two lateral ventricles, is the septum pellucidum. That can be seen on this model right here. We have connective tissue layers surrounding the brain called meninges. Here on this spinal cord cross section we can see the dura mater on the outside, the arachnoid mater, and the pia mater directly surrounding the spinal cord. This is true of the brain, but we can't see it very well on our models. This is a model of the head with the brain removed. This model shows us some of the dural folds. So if we look here on the side, we have the Fox cerebri. And then we have the tentorium cerebelli. It's a tent-like structure. If we take this off, we have this little projection, this dural projection. That's the Fox cerebelli. If we look up here, we see the superior sagittal sinus, and then this one down here is the inferior sagittal sinus, both in blue. And if we look here, we have the transverse sinus. Here we have a model of the limbic system. Down here we have the amygdala, continuous with the hippocampus. This next to the corpus callosum, on top of which we would find the cingulate gyrus. On this model we can see the cingulate gyrus right here, just above the corpus callosum. Then we have the fornix, connecting to the mammillary bodies. We can see the fornix on the brainstem model, right here. And here we have the olfactory tract and bulb. Here we're going to be going over the cranial nerves. First we have the olfactory tracts and the olfactory bulbs from which olfactory nerve 1 comes through. And then here we have the brain stem and we have optic nerve 2 coming out from here, coming out this direction from the optic chiasm, optic tract back here, optic nerve 2. And then we have here the oculomotor nerve 3 and then on the side we have trochlear nerve 4 next to that we have a trigeminal nerve 5 and then at the front again we have abducens nerve 6 and then this bundle here we have facial nerve 7 on the outside right here we have vestibulocochlear nerve 8 and again on this side and then here we have glossopharyngeal nerve 9 and below that we have vagus nerve 10 and then below that we have the accessory nerve visible partially on this side right here this little bit so again we had glossopharyngeal nerve 9 vagus nerve 10 and accessory nerve 11 and then here on the front, we have the hypoglossal nerve.